Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and yesterday we took a look at the new Angstead Arms Roller Delayed PCC. Uh, we took it apart, talked about how it works. Today we're going to be out on the range to actually try it out. And I figured the best way to try this out would be to compare it to something similar. Well, there's something very similar that's also available, and that would be HK's SP5. Now, this isn't quite a perfect comparison. To be perfect, I would probably have the SP5K, which has the same barrel length as Angstad's carbine, but I don't. I do have this, though. So, uh, we have set them up both with red dots. They're both just plain red dots. Exactly the same ammo in each, and I'm going to figure we'll go ahead and shoot a course of fire involving some static targets, a Texas Star, and a spinner. We'll do it on the clock and see which one comes in faster. So, a uh, quick comparison. The reason that these are like-for-like uh, -like comparison, they're both roller-delayed operated. They're both 9mm. Um, we have basically the same sort of stock arrangements on them, the same sort of red dots on them. They both have triggers that are not quite great. The SP5 trigger is a bit squishy, typical of HKs. The Angstad trigger is a bit heavy. Uh, because they went ahead with just a standard mil-spec AR trigger in it. And then also, these have virtually the exact same price point. So this seems like a perfect comparison to me. Let's go ahead and uh, get rolling. We'll start with the Angstead. I have zeroed both guns before we started filming. They're both dead on, so that won't be an issue. Sweet, I did it in just one. I have, I think, three rounds left in there. And my time was 31.40. All right, quick caveat before I actually shoot the SP5 for the first time, uh, Angstad provided the MDP-9 for free. So if it wins, it's clearly going to be because I'm biased in favor of a free gun. H&K initially sent this for t and &E and then sent me a bill for it, and I liked it so much that I paid for it. So if the SP5 wins, it's clearly because I'm biased in favor of a gun that I actually have some personal investment in. So. Ah. Over and over, and that was 36.28. Uh, weird. <laughs> All right, well, there's a classic memed out malfunction there. That is legitimately the first malfunction of any kind that I have gotten with the Angstad, and this is the third time I've had it out to the range.
so much for this run. That was terrible. 56.49 because I ran out and had to reload. Over. All right. Ooh. 26.81. A little faster. Over. Woo! <laughs> All right. 2372. All right, Jordan, we got one mag left on each of the guns. Let's see what you can do with. One magazine only, no reloads. All right. That was extremely close. Ah. The time there was 3107. <sighs> one, any one of those hitting would have run it over. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get close to the end of the spinner. you choked at exactly the same point. All right, your time on that was 28.91. Ah, uh, that was a good one too. What do you think about Angstad versus HK? Uh, if you take them apples to apples. Yeah, let's just say right now you can take one of the two home with you. Which do you take? <sighs> Tough decision, isn't it? I mean, you want to say HK so you can flex, but... I but do I do like the Angstat. There is a certain flex to, I spent $2,700 on a roller delayed 9mm, and it doesn't even need to be an HK. Touche. <laughs> I do like the Angstat. It is it is actually lighter than, it's a lot lighter. than this. Uh, so For actual use and not memeing the pores, I'm going to go Angstat. All right. All right, one other thing that I want to play around with, with the Angstad, is a suppressor. Because this actually comes with a tri-lug adapter, and I happen to have a Dead Air uh, Wolfman 9mm suppressor. I have a tri-lug adapter for it, and I'm really curious how much gas I'm actually going to get back in the face out of the ejection port. That's traditionally a major problem for me as a left-hander with suppressed guns. So, got the can on. I've actually re-zeroed it for subsonic ammunition. I'm also curious to see how this handles subsonic. How does the recoil feel? And so I figured just for kicks, let's do one more run through our course of fire with subsonics.
Okay, well, that's my last round. What was my time? 3068. Okay. So that's basically right in there with all of the other runs I did. And about one shot off of spinning. Yeah, one of those misses been a hit, would have been there. So um, it is interesting to me that th this did actually lock open this time. I have had about 35% success in this locking open on empty magazines, both Magpuls and actual Glock made uh, pistol magazines. So it has the parts in it to lock open, but in my experience now, a couple of range trips, it, it really does not do so reliably. So uh, gas out of the action was minimal, actually, much to my happiness. There was a little bit. I got a little bit of spatter every once in a while, every couple of shots. But what I've had in the past, especially with 5.56 carbines, is enough gas that like my eyes start watering and I have a hard time keeping especially my left eye or uh, in my left eye open. With this, nothing even remotely approaching that sort of issue. And I would call this really not an issue at all for gas, which is excellent. Um, the recoil was lighter with subsonic, as one would kind of expect. Extremely pleasant to shoot, suppressed. Now, overall thoughts on the MDP-9 as a shooter, the front end is a little bit short. I have a vertical grip here because especially with the can, this all gets pretty hot pretty fast. Even without, this gets hot. And out here in the desert, it gets hot. But I can only, this is the only place I can put a vertical grip because there's only one full M-lock slot on this handguard. There's a full one up on the, the side here, but on the bottom, there's only a half slot and you can't actually put anything there. So out here, my hand is still really close to the muzzle and the can. And I risk touching the can if I'm not careful. Without the can on there, I can actually feel muzzle blast on my front hand. You can't actually see it, but I can feel a little bit of puff from that uh, muzzle break every time you fire, which is, it's a little unpleasant, a little distracting until you get used to it. This is significantly narrower than the SP5. It's substantially lighter than the SP5. You fold the stock up, take the can off, which, yeah, I'm not gonna be grabbing quite yet, uh, but you can make this into a really compact package, akin, frankly, to the MP5K. Overall, I wish it came with a, a better quality trigger. I thought that would be a real problem out here shooting. It turned out really not to be, but I think you can improve the performance of this a bit with a, a much nicer trigger. And a little disappointed in the magazine hold open, essentially not working. It does not work well enough that you can count on it working. You have to plan to get a click on your last shot. I really wish it came with an ambidextrous safety. I think for the price point of this thing, it ought to have. Um, I can live with all of the other controls being non-ambi, but you know, even the charging handle is ambidextrous. They just, and then this is a commercially available part. So uh, I will probably put a nicer trigger in this and get one that comes with an ambidextrous safety because that would be nice for me as a left-hander so I don't have to do this kind of thing. Overall, um, I honestly came out here expecting the SP5 to be the winner and it actually wasn't. The Angstad came in uh, in our time trials a little bit faster. So um, well done, Angstad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Oh, we forgot to reset the Texas Star. Derp. All right, uh, stand by. <laughs>